Howdy from Arlington, Texas, y'all. I hope you're healthy and well on this Sunday evening. So today's sh Sunday showcase is inspired by this whole uh, Tops Project 2020 thing. So, yeah, I'm not a fan. Just not a fan. And I tried. I went through eBay uh, probably, probably about a week ago and just search Tops 2020 just to see all of the ones that I could see that were available. And the only one I found so far that I really liked was the Ricky Henderson rookie and I don't know, it had so, it was black, but then it had some neon colors to it. I really did dig that one and I watched some of them on eBay. I haven't pulled the trigger. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. But that's really the only one I've dug so far. Um I mean, it's taking it's taken over my Twitter feed to the point that I've honestly become less active on there, just because I feel like it's everywhere, and uh, yeah, I'm just, you know, it is what it is, and obviously I'm starting to see more of it on YouTube too. Um, I definitely think the uh, the whole COVID thing is exacerbating all of this. Um, if we were in normal times, and you know, there was a they were churning out a new set weekly like they tend to do during the season. You know, would this be as big of a thing? I don't think so. It'd still be big. Um, it'd still be extremely popular. But it wouldn't be to the level it is, or at least it would get broken up by other things that would normally be out this, this time of year. I know it's too early for Allen and Ginter, but there would be other things that would have already been out that at least would have broken up the, the monotony of seeing this 2020. But, I mean... I'm also not that guy It's going to be, be like, because I don't like it, they shouldn't do it. Because the popularity is showing that at least for now, you know, there's a market for it. And I think that's cool. Um, I hope it doesn't go away. It's another thing for folks to collect, you know. And, you know, as we always say in here, you know, collect how you want. Um, again, just not my thing. I definitely would be excited to see some other things hit, though. And, um you know, kind of break it up. You know, for those of you, I don't know if there's any of you that are watching that have made the comment, but I've seen it a lot on Twitter. People are like, oh, I'm so tired of hearing about basketball, and I'm so tired of hearing about Zion and this and that. Well, you know what? You know, it is what it is, and that's how I feel about this. I'm just over it. I, you know, like I said, it is what it is. But even though I don't like it, doesn't mean, like I said, doesn't mean I want it to go away. What I do wonder is if the novelty is going to wear off at some point, kind of like the Tops Now and the Tops Living has. Um, what I do like about it is I do like, and it, this is an exclusive to the Project 2020s, the direct to consumer. You know, it drives out or cuts out the distributors that are always out there manipulating the prices. So that's great. And, you know, if somehow these were going through distributors, you, you can rest assured that the price would be doubled what they are. I do like the print-to-order concept. Again, that's not exclusive to this. They've also done that with Now and with Living. It doesn't ensure that the secondary prices will stay higher, but it certainly helps as opposed to, you know, pack-pulled items that all have, you know, in general, this, each base card should have the same print run, you know, other than the noted short prints, super short prints, etc. Um, and it's just not fake scarcity that they're producing, and I dig that. Uh, you can also still buy on the secondary market cheaper if you don't want to go through tops, and I think that's a good thing because there's people that are buying in bulk. They can resell. They pay less by buying in bulk, resell it on eBay. And they make, a, you know, you got other collectors or people that are in the hobby to make money, making a little more money. You know what? Like I said, collect what you like, and if you like this, go for it. I, I'm not one to tell you no. I can just say that it's not my thing. One of the best things about our hobby is the abundance of ways that we can collect. And, you know, there may be a million card collectors out there, and nobody has the same collection. Um, you know, one other thing, if Dale Murphy or Will Clark was a part of this, I'll bet you I'd be a little bit more excited about it because it would be somebody that I would collect. It's also a product for me of there's just not anybody that I've seen that I'm a huge fan of. And just in general, I'm not a fan of, you know, the art cards and the stuff like that. It's just not my thing. Now, I liked the upper deck team checklist that you had back in the day and, the, you know, the score character subset cards that were in the early, the late 80s, early 90s score sets. Those were fun. 
Um, but like, you know, if I pulled one of these one of one sketch cards that I've seen in other products, I think it might be a little more prevalent in like Star Wars and things like that. You know, I'd better be able to resell it because honestly, it's it's junk to me. It's, it's just not anything cool, you know. But that's my take, and I will step off my soapbox now. But what I am going to show you is after five minutes, I'm going to show you some art cards I do like, and those are gummy arts cards. If you're on Twitter and you're on there with any frequency and you have you know you follow a lot, you've probably seen these before. So. You can follow them on Twitter at Gummy Arts, one word, G-U-M-M-Y-A-R-T-S. I'll put a link to that, to his uh, page below. And I'll also link to his website where you can buy the cards. However, they're currently sold out. He does restock them from time to time. I've only bought two packs from the 2019 set, and I believe I showed them on here, but it would have been more than a year ago. So we'll run through these pretty quickly, and I'll just show you what they are, what he does. You know, you take something like this, and it's just kind of his artist rendering. Again, kind of similar to the 2020, but he doesn't necessarily go as wild. So here, this looks like a 1993 Jim Abbott. So this was one of the cards I've got in my pack. El Santo? You know, and this is why I think I've done this before, because somebody commented they did they couldn't believe I didn't know who these some of these people were. I have no idea who that is. I'm guessing it's out of a movie. Maybe it's that Jack... Didn't Jack Black do, like, a wrestling luchador movie? I'm guessing maybe something like that. This was the one. So I did see somebody had commented later, Shark Hunter. Um, but I never watched that. So, as you can tell, what he does... You know, he does some baseball, but he goes outside the uh, realm of sports. And then each one is stamped with just a little gummy arts on the back. Uh, so, yes, I do have a T206 Wagner. This is my copy of it. Stephen Malkmus Pavement? I'm, I I got nothing. I have no idea who or what that is. If you do, let me know <laughs> in the comments below. Tony Stone of the Indianapolis Clown. So I don't know if this is taken off of some kind of actual card or if this is just his own thing. Um, Marvin Miller. I know that everybody was all, you know, he got into the Hall of Fame and blah, 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 blah. But I blame that guy for the reason you can't go to a baseball game without spending $300 now. And these guys are making just asinine amounts of money. So hashtag fart noise on that. You got a 75 design on the Michael Jack Schmidt, I believe was his full name. This is probably my favorite one. Uh, Ralph Furley from Three's Company. <laughs> Hacienda Palms Apartments, but the reason for that is that Don Knotts is actually from my hometown of Morgantown, West Virginia, and actually attended my high school uh, and West Virginia University, and he's definitely the uh, most famous alumni of the Morgantown High School. So this one, I had to look at the checklist to see it, but I guess there was some relatively famous, popular fight. I may have known about it, but can't recall, between the Padres and the uh, Atlanta Braves and I can make out a couple people there two of them because of their name you got I believe that would be Donnie Moore you got Bob Watson it's just funny because he ended up being a disciplinarian for MLB later I believe and I'm pretty sure that's Pascual Perez but I'm not really sure who the other guys are somebody getting carried away in handcuffs I'm guessing that was a fan jumped onto the field or into it or something I think this one may be my wife's favorite because she loves her some Golden Girls. A Dorothy's Bornack in the 85 Tops design. i got to wonder, maybe 85 is when that series debuted. Not sure. 82 Tops, Andy Kaufman. And that may be when he did... I don't know if that was maybe the year he did his thing with Jerry Lawler. Maybe it was 82. Maybe there's some correlation there. I never noticed it before. Could have done some research. Another one of my favorites of the ones I have. The, uh, the Terry Funk who was a professional wrestler or like, who knows. I mean, I, he's getting up there in years, but some of these guys go on into their 60s and 70s uh, at the lower levels. So who knows? I find that one kind of cool, though, just because I'm a wrestling guy. So 1979 victory leaders, Joe Necro, Phil Necro, Mike Flanagan. Again, just for fun. I'm not anywhere close to the set of these, but, you know, it was what it was. 
craft work. I'm guessing it's a band of some sort. I could be wrong. Feel free to tell me below that I'm an idiot. Hoist Gracie in a 93 tops, and that's probably, 93 is probably when UFC 1 was, hence the motivation or inspiration for the design. Springsteen in a 75, uh, 75 tops design. Jackie Robinson. And then I even find the, uh, these are what they actually, these are like the wrappers that they came in each pack. And as you can see, they're a little different just in size or whatnot. But I just figured keep those, what the heck. And then I guess in each pack, because again, I've only bought two, but you get a checklist. So there's some other ones on here that I would have loved to have gotten. And maybe I'll find somebody I can trade with someday. The Old Hoss Radburn, Iron Sheik, uh, some other cool ones on there. There's a Scotty Pippen in there. Very cool. So anyway, I just wanted to show those off, maybe speak up for uh, Gummy Arts, because I do think those things are, I do think those are pretty cool, pretty nifty, and at least I do like something art-related, since I'm such a Debbie Downer on the Tops 2020 and all that. But anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for hanging in if you've made it through 11 minutes. I hope you enjoy The Last Dance episodes 5 and 6 tonight. I know I will. And other than that, that's about it. Happy collecting, y'all, and I will see you down the road.